Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday morning. My God, is there so much to cover, you guys. My goodness. Woo, let's go. We're going to start off. This is a little different, and this happened several days ago, but I think it's important to bring up. Actress Sophie Winkleman, she is Lady Frederick Windsor. She's the daughter-in-law of the Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, decided to go out in the freezing cold to help sell issues of, you know, the big issue. She was standing alongside a gentleman named Kelvin Gregory uh, trying to sell the issue. That, by the way, is the vendor who sold a copy to uh, King Charles that had his own portrait on it during his 75th anniversary. Well, anyway, Sophie stepped up and said, you know, I'm going to teach you guys some freaking manners. Because what she noted is that people should just say no thank you if they don't want the addition. Instead, you know, politely decline. She said instead people were just outright ignoring her and how rude it was. Now she did an Instagram and there she said, and I'm quoting, I'm quite cold. I can't imagine standing out here very, very freezing and people not even talking to me saying, I don't have cash or sorry, I can't do it today. She said, I've realized in a very short space of time, communication is very important because just being rejected and people walking by all day, that's not okay. And it, you know, then people came back and said, this was just a PR stunt. And she said, no, 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 I'm a very big fan. So she recommends you buy it and read it because it's really brilliant and also find your local vendor and build a friendly rapport. I agree. All right, moving on. Next up, we have King Charles, who was finally seen for the first time since it was announced that he's going to have prostate surgery next week. He's currently staying at his private home in um, Burke, called Burke Hall, and he's going to be going in for surgery next week. Now, I don't see what the big deal is. Most men in their 70s have to have this procedure. So he later arrived at his Sandringham estate. Uh, the queen was with him. He canceled his engagement and has been ordered to rest before he is admitted to the hospital. And then the, you know, the articles came out. Queen Camilla was supposed to return to London, but she canceled to stay by her husband's side. Again, just like William, you know, they take care of their spouses. That's what they're supposed to do. Why is everybody so surprised? Next up, you know, it's these kinds of stories then that I absolutely believe. They're saying that Harry and Meghan did not know that Charles was sick. They heard about it on the news. They didn't know that Catherine was sick. They heard about it on the news. I believe that because I don't believe there's absolutely any communication between them at all. And why would there be when Harry repeats absolutely everything? All right, moving on. Moving on, now while the Princess of Wales remains in the hospital, Tony Hudgel, the adorable nine-year-old who's a double amputee uh, and the youngest person to uh, ever be in the New Year's Honors, he was awarded the British Empire Medal for Services to the Prevention of Child Abuse. Um, well, Tony and his mother sent uh, well wishes and told Catherine, you know, you need to get well, but take your time because we all try to think we're super women, especially when we have children, but take your time and don't rush back to things. Everybody's just waiting for you, especially this hunky dunky. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Moving on now, this really got me because the trolls, these Sussex squad, Mainstream media has picked up once again on their behavior because some of the most disgusting comments that they've made, they're claiming she went in for a tummy tuck. Really? Have you seen her stomach? Flat as a fritter. They're claiming that she was pregnant. It was an ectopic. It was not. You know, and let's not forget that when they speak, they are representing Harry and Meghan. That's why they're the Sussex squad. Well, the latest thing that came out, if you can believe it, according to this blind item, the narrative is that somehow she had to have abdominal surgery because she's an alcoholic. And Harry and Meghan have remained 
completely silent. Now, the last time they were questioned about the Sussex squad, remember, they called somebody to thank them and then come to find out that this woman ran one of the troll accounts that was sending death threats to Catherine. And when Harry and Meghan were asked about it, what they all they had to say was no comment. So they refused to speak out against the Sussex squad, even though they're very aware of them. And that's where people like this person on Twitter brings it up. Their fans get called out for their comments, but yet Harry and Meghan cry and whine about how mean the British pr and social media are to them. You know, victims. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with the royal news here. I think it's not going to be long before Meghan pulls some sort of a health scare. You know, you, you'll see. Something will happen. And I also agree with this Twitter person. Um, Catherine's probably the only person in the world that could undergo major surgery and get ripped to shreds online for it. I think Megan Small said it best. If you're going to go online and accuse someone of being an alcoholic, maybe you should wipe the internet of all the pictures of you getting, you know, S-faced. You know what I'm saying. I mean, really, guys? She likes her wine. And by the way, if you were an alcoholic, that doesn't mean you need surgery. So now it's coming out that Harry's been urged to call King Charles and call Catherine. Uh... I don't think they're going to take his phone calls. I mean, I wouldn't. All right, moving on. This article came out. It made me laugh. Oh, my God. Because it's basically pointing out that not only has Harry embarrassed the armed forces by give, being given an award that, you know, basically he didn't earn. We know now that he stole the Queen's nickname constantly trying to forge connections between them and the House of Windsor, you know, so they can have their elevated status. They're now saying that the two of them are like two eager limpets sucking nutrients off the rusty hull of the Royal Yacht Britannia. Yeah, I believe that. Moving on. All right, let's move on now. We've already heard that there's going to be a spinoff to Suits. It's a new show. It's the same crap, but it's about a Hollywood law firm now. And they're saying that one of the shows, um, you know, one of the characters is custom made for Megan in an attempt to lure her back. This woman, Erica, is an African-American focused career California girl in her 30s who's smarter than everyone else and enjoys an eventful personal life. Uh-huh. There's just one problem with that. Megan is in her mid-40s, closer to 50s, and her uh, previous cast just snubbed her at the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Next up, I just want to touch on this. We've already touched on it before. Let's touch on it again. The um, Counselor of State position, it's come out that only working royals can be Counselor of States, so therefore, Harry can never be a Counselor of State, Andrew can never be a Counselor of State, and neither can Beatrice. So yeah, Harry doesn't need a UK domicile anymore because he's never going to be called upon. Moving on to this next story. Do you guys remember One Young World where Megan stood up and gave a speech? Uh, for, it was like a five minute speech or seven minute speech where she referenced herself 53 times. Well, apparently uh, the charity commission looked into it and found that senior staff salaries and bonuses had potential conflicts of interest. According to the article, there's been governance failings, breaches of trust by the charity's trustees, poor minute taking, uh, conflicts of interest had not been well managed, there were unauthorized payments. Ooh, the Markle effect. Mm. All right, moving on. Here we go. One of our two big stories for today, Prince Harry withdrew his libel claim against the Mail on Sunday. Now, we know that this is one of three lawsuits he was had going against um, this particular publisher in the UK. Apparently, on the day that relevant documents were due, the attorneys uh, canceled the whole lawsuit. And people are saying, ooh, what did he have to hide? So, People are saying that this could have, you know, his emails where he tried to mislead the public. Remember, the judge did his own recollections may vary, that that evidence would have come out. And remember what happened in Megan's lawsuit where she won, but she lost because we found out that she had helped with finding freedom. She had briefed Jason Knopf and we found out that she and Harry were liars. And I think they learned from that and decided that they weren't going to go forward because it could be more detrimental to him, in my opinion. 
Now, of course, uh, the news had something to say about all of this. Just listen to this. So the Prince of Harry, uh, Prince Harry, it appears, has lost his battle, uh, particularly with this libel case against the Mail on Sunday. Of course, he's got a number of other cases going through the High Court in London, but this is to do with an article written in the Mail on Sunday about his separate libel claim case even, um, to do with his home office security. Now, the article alleged that Prince Harry was trying to essentially spin the narrative and make him seem a bit more in a positive light or a sympathetic light in the eyes of the British public by using his PR team to essentially spin the narrative. Now, Prince Harry then decided to sue the Mail on Sunday for writing that article because he alleges that the article was an attack on his honesty and integrity and would undermine his charity work as well as, uh, as, well as his efforts to tackle misinformation online. Well, the Mail on Sunday hit back and said it was honest opinion and did not cause Prince Harry serious harm. But Prince Harry's lawyers were so convinced that they would win this case that they asked the judge to not even go to a trial because they just were absolutely convinced that they would be able to win it without a trial. But the judge disagreed last month uh, and said that the Mail on Sunday have a real prospect of successfully showing at trial that previous Harry press statements provided a misleading description of his case against the Home Office. So what happens now? Well, it looks like Prince Harry has a pretty hefty court fee. So he could have to pay Associated Newspapers, that's the publisher of the Mail on Sunday, £250,000 plus his own lawyer's fees, which could take the total somewhere in the region of around £750,000. So not only has he withdrawn this libel case, he's also got a pretty hefty bill as well. You know... It's I just think it's hilarious because let's not forget that when William suit settled his case, no attorney's fees. He got a million pounds or like one one point three million dollars. Harry, in a different case, won one hundred and forty eight thousand pounds. But in this case, he had to withdraw his complaint. And now he's going to have a legal bill that's like almost a million dollars. OK, and people are on my account going, it's not the same case. Well, I'm well aware of that, but monetarily, <laughs> it, it's a loss. He loses. So much for the Dragon Slayer. Harry's spokesperson, who we st they haven't identified, no clue who it is, says, you know, it's been years since this claim was filed. And we are waiting to hear what Ravik is going to do. We're waiting for the Duke's judicial review. That's where our focus is, because... Harry's number one concern is the safety of his family, not these legal proceedings. And we, we just continue to give them a platform. And by the way, it's premature to speculate what our legal costs are going to be. And I believe that this was all released because he was trying to sneak it underneath what's going on in the UK. And you should know that even though he withdrew his claim, he's still saying that um, basically he didn't lie and that he had every intention of paying for his own security. He just won't admit the reason he settled is because he would have lost. That's all there is to it. And yes, there's going to be a lot of court fees, whether he likes it or not. And finally, thank you to the Sussex Bunyan, because one of the emails mentioned by the judge says, and they're quoting, we cannot afford private security until we earn. That says it all. They are having trouble paying for their private security. That's what it is. Now let's move on to the other big story. Harry went to get his Living Legends Award. Now there are pictures of him entering the venue, but they were taken by Carl Lawson. He's the guy who did the podcast with Thomas Markle, where he used Thomas Markle, and then he went around putting copyright strikes on anybody who used any of his pictures. Remember him? Anyway, you can go on X and look at it, but I'm not going to speculate what I think he was doing, but yeah. All right, moving on now into the story. John Travolta gets up and announces Harry. And there is a video, which I can't show due to copyright, and you hear a little smattering of applause, but when you look at the crowd, they're not clapping. I don't know if that's something they added in afterwards. So Harry gets up, puts his head down. They put this medal around his neck. He walks over to the podium. And one of the first things they ask him is, hey, Harry, can you tell us about like the first time you flew? And Harry goes, I can't, it's classified. Yeah, because you're not a pilot. 
He looks up at John Travolta, I'm not kidding, and he says, I was one year old when you were dancing with my mom. I bet you continue to dine out on that every single night. Yes, he said that to John Travolta. <laughs> Is anybody surprised in the least that he referenced his mother again? Cringe. Okay, then this photo comes out and everybody's like, who is this guy? I'm not kidding. His name is Prince Mario Max, okay? He's an actor. Um, he's a health guru. You can look at the hashtags here. So people started doing some digging into who this guy is. According to his Wikipedia page, he was adopted. His mother was married for the fourth time time to Danish Prince Waldemar of Schomburg Leip, Limp. I don't know how you say that. So he married the mother and then he adopted the son. And so the son legally changed his name. Yes. At the age of 31. Mm -hmm. Now, Megan was a no-show. And everybody was like, why do you think Megan didn't show up? Well, according to her, she had to miss this glitzy ceremony because one of their children was ill. Okay, first of all, this is what I think. Number one, there were no A-listers there. Uh, so there was nobody for her to really, you know, talk to. Number two, she probably had a list of demands a mile long because that's usually what happens and they probably didn't meet her demands. Number three, she was out of the country for extremely long periods of time without her kids and her kids are young. So if one of them was sick and was home, she had nannies and her mother there to help take care. So her excuse of I stayed home because the kids are sick is not true. Now, there's also a rumor going around. We know that Laura Sanchez is on the board for these awards. And apparently, she's engaged to Jeff Bezos, who is the Amazon founder. He's like a billionaire. And uh, word is, she didn't want Megan anywhere near her fiancé. Apparently, uh, it's being alleged that Megan was flirting with him. Yeah, can't blame her there. You know, in the end, uh, people are saying that that award is hollow and pathetic. Uh, I happen to agree. All right, here we go. Finn update. You guys haven't seen him in a while. He was perfectly fine. We were sitting on the couch. And, you know, he usually prefers my husband. I, I don't know. You know, he's my husband's the one who used to bring him into bed and snuggle with him when he was a little puppy. You guys remember those those days. Um, and for some reason, he just sort of leaned over on me and just put his whole body against me and was like, oh, snuggly. That's not usually, that's usually the behavior that he does with my husband, not with me. But as you can see, everything is fine with him. He's doing well. All is well in his world. I'm sorry it's been a while since we've had an update. And I have one more update for you. Um, we had a sunset the other day that was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. I, I just had to take these photos. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. It was just beautiful. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Put those comments down. Make them good. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you've already hit subscribe, you might want to double check and make sure you are still subscribed. If you've donated to my coffee fund, thank you very much. Don't forget in the description box, there's links to my Patreon and there's links to buy my father's book on Amazon. And as always, you guys, have a great day. Oh,